Oh, hey fellas. Let's build one of those. This is a gravity hammer from the game Halo. And I picked this up uh, on, on Etsy from, a, uh, from the Etsy store Cyberforge. And I believe they have an eBay store as well. I'm not sure if, I know he has a website because the website has instructions on how to put this together. Uh, it's mostly 3D printed, and, uh, but it does have a wooden bell rod that goes through the, the handle to give it a little more rigidity. So uh, it comes, I, I forget how many pieces, but I've got it all taped together, obviously. Um, I'm 5'10", 5'11", so you can see that this is about five foot tall. Hmm. Now, if, uh, if, if it was gonna be actually true to scale of the game, I would say that it would probably have to be twice the size of this, but this is a pretty big, cool piece uh, that I am going to be building next. So let's take it over to the pool table where we can spread it out, pull it apart, and show you what all comes in the kit. So here's what comes in the kit. And it comes in a bunch of different pieces, so it gives you two of these wooden dowel rods that fit into the handle. Everything seems to fit together really nicely. And then he's got these 3D printed parts of the handle, printed in sections. Now, when I get to putting this together, I'm gonna to reverse this top part because I wanna add some leather wrap on the handle and I think it's just gonna look a lot better with the leather wrap. Now, overall, this is pretty plain Jane. There's not a lot of detail to it. So then I'm gonna go ahead and add the detail once I get it all put together. Um, but you can see the hammer part actually comes in several different sections here. We've got the blade on this end and then this little piece fits on here in a tongue and groove fashion. And then uh, the rest of the, the head of the hammer. Now, we look closely at the printing, and it's really rough. So I'm going to have to do a lot of sanding. And I'm not going to cover all the sanding that I'm going to do, because I could, it's going to be days and days of sanding. Look how thick that is. Um, so I'm going to try to smooth everything out, because when I'm finished with this, I want it to look like a, a real metal piece. Um, until you pick it up, I want you to think that it's actual metal. And let's go over here and take a look at all the stuff that I got at Walmart today to uh, get this ready for primer and paint. All right, so I picked up a bunch of different grits of sandpaper. Now, normally, I never would ever let 80 grit sandpaper touch one of my models. But since this is a 3D prop and I'm going to have to do some really heavy-duty sanding, I picked up some 80 grit, some 120, 180, and then 320. And then obviously I've got finer grits that I typically use for models. I also picked up one of these. It was like 22 bucks at Walmart. It's just a, a, a rotary type sanding thing. Hopefully that'll work. That'll take some of the, the elbow grease out of, of uh, sanding. I also picked up one of these sanding blocks, which is kind of big for what this is, but uh, I might find some use for it. And if I don't uh, use it on this project, I'm sure I'll use it for other stuff. Uh, I also picked up some of this. I've seen a lot of guys on YouTube that um, deal in uh, 3D printed props. They use this two-in-one fillable and sandable primer. So once I get it roughly sanded, I can spray this down and then do some finer sanding, fill in any um, uh, areas that need uh, smoothed out. And then finally, I'm going to put a clear or a uh, black flat coat on it. So instead of trying to air, I'm not going to be able to airbrush this. Uh, there may be parts that I'll, I'll airbrush, but uh, overall, I'm going to be using... Um, uh, this flat black spray paint and some dry brushing and some other metallic finishes. And uh, I haven't quite figured out exactly how I'm going to go about that. Now, once I get this done, I'm going to add a lot of different detail. I've got some plastic card that I'm going to add some detail. And, um, you know, when I looked online, I saw the different uh, renditions of what a gravity hammer is supposed to look like. Uh, this really didn't match. Uh, there, there are a lot of details that aren't included in here. And so I'm going to kind of kind of fudge a little bit and come up with my own little uh, unique gravity hammer and add some really cool detail in it. So I'm not going to film any of the sanding. I'm going to go ahead and do all that off camera. Once I get that done, then we'll come back and uh, I'll show you the process of, of putting this all together.
right, now would be a good opportunity to kind of show you where I'm at in the build. So I've got the entire hammer and blade section put together. I've got the handle all together. It's it's primed. It's I've got filler primer on it. I've sanded it. I think that's ready for the final paint coat. But uh, this one, I'm still working on it. Uh, I started with uh, 80 grit. Well, I started putting this together. I put this all together with this 3D gloop. And I got this online. It's for PLA. And what this basically does is like, uh, to me, extra thin cement does to styrene. This does the same thing to PLA. So it kind of melts the two pieces and welds them together. And it's a really strong bond. Uh, this was kind of expensive. I can't remember exactly how much I paid. It was like $20 to $30, I believe, for this uh, uh, four ounce bottle. And it comes in like a cement type thing, like a real thick cement. But it melts the PA, PLA together and forms a really strong bond. So that's how I put that together. And then there are screws, and I don't know if the camera will pick them up, but there are screw holes right here where you put screws in and they're recessed. And then what I did is all the sections that need to be filled to fill in gaps, I used uh, UV cured resin for those. Uh, I sanded with 80 grit, uh, 120, and then 180. So I've got it in this in uh, this state right now. Uh, there was a section up here, see where I filled this in with uh, uh, Magic Sculpt right here. There's a section where it didn't go all the way up. I don't know if it was just an error when they printed it out. So I had to make that uh, connect somehow. So I just took Magic Sculpt and molded in that, that area. It's not perfect, but because uh, it's really hard to get in there. And, and I can't, I couldn't add that until I actually put these together. So uh, I did the best I could with a Dremel tool and some sandpaper and sculpting it. And I think it's, I think it'll look okay. A lot better than what it would have otherwise. So uh, what I'm doing now is this section up here in the hammer. Now I'm going to fill in these areas with some blue reflective tape. And I've got some, let me show it to you. Rather than try to light this up with LEDs, what I'm doing is I'm using this, and it, the camera's not picking it up, but when the light shines on this at night, <clears throat> it reflects. It's like the reflective tape you would see on the back of emergency vehicles, but it's blue. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this in sections and put it in here, and that way it's going to have a nice little glowing effect. Um, so in order to do that, you can see it's kind of rough in there and right along there. So I'm going to fill this in. And how I'm going to fill this in, let me move the camera over here. What I'm using is Bondo glazing and spot putty. And I've got some mixed up here. You can see it's somewhat thick. And what I'm doing is I'm thinning it with acetone. And I'm going to hand brush it in there. Oh, I spilled some isopropyl alcohol. I'm just mixing this up and thinning it down and I'm going to hand brush it on. Now I've seen somebody airbrush this. Uh, I'm not going to put this through my airbrush. I think it's just going to be a pain in the butt to clean out. I mean, obviously it thins with acetone pretty well. And then I'm just going to take a brush and I'm going to brush it in there. Now this stuff, if you've never worked with this, I rarely use this for my models. But on like bigger projects, it does come in kind of handy. Uh, like when I did the space shuttle, I used this to fill in a bunch of areas on the uh, the fuel tank on the 72nd space shuttle that I built a couple years ago. So let's bring the camera back over here and just show you how I'm going to brush this in now. Again, because this is so big, it is kind of hard to... To work with on camera. I'm just going to take this and I'm just going to brush this in here just like so and then I can come back and I can sand it. Now some of these areas I'm just going to have to leave. I'm not going to be able to get in and sand. I guess I could but I've been sanding this thing for well over a week and a half. Now I just want to make this somewhat smooth. 
so my tape fits flush. It doesn't have to be perfect. And a lot of this I did with the, a lot of this I filled in with the uh, UV cured resin. A lot of this area up here, and it's probably still not great. Now, I, will, I should be, this sands super easily, so I should be able to get in here and sand away any excess fairly easily. But I just want to tackle this a little bit at a time because this does make a mess. It is really messy when you sand it. And I find it's better just to wet sand this. Cuts down on the dust. So I want to try to make these as smooth as possible. So after I prime this, the the tape sticks down really nicely. Because if I got a bunch of ridges in here, the tape's not going to stick down as well. And I can just come back. And this does dry really quickly. So I'm going to get on continuing to do this. I may put another coat on it and then sand it. And then um, hopefully, oh, and then I've got some other things. I'll come back and show you that once I'm done with this. But I am making some, uh, some details, adding a little bit of detail with plastic card, and I'll show you what I've done with that. Okay, so I wanted to show you what this looks like before I put the sandable fillable primer on it. And you can see I've added some details with some plastic card. Now this side of the part of the hammer is a bit smaller than this side for some reason, just the way it's made. You can tell there it's, it's uh, not exactly symmetrical, but uh, that is something that I noticed when I went ahead to, to make these uh, plastic card detail, like this uh, like cover type thing on here. And uh, I added some plastic card up here to make this little deal that I've seen on some of the some of the hammers on, on the interwebs. Um, I also reinforced this section right along here and I've drilled some holes. Now uh, I used to be into to making sheaths, knife sheaths with kydex. So I've got some fasteners I'm going to put in there to give a little extra detail. That's why I drilled those holes. I've also got some uh, fasteners I'm going to put in uh, up here as well just to give it a little bit extra detail. Uh, now I do have the handle all smoothed out. I've got about three to five coats of sandable fillable primer on here and I've actually got the handle like pretty smooth. So uh, I just wanted to show you that before I go ahead and spray down the primer. Once I spray this primer down I'm going to see a lot of areas that I'm, I'm going to need to address. Some of them I will address, some of them I'll, I'll try to hide later on when I do weathering and, and, and painting. But um, overall, I think this is going to be ready for the primer. So I'm going to go ahead and start spraying that while it's nice outside. And uh, we'll be back when I get all that done. Okay, so to give you an idea of what I'm doing next, and this is really hard to put on video, but I've got some of these AK True Metal. It's like a paste that... Kind of reminded me of Rub and Buff. And they come in a bunch of different colors. And I've had these forever. And I used them once and I didn't like them. Um, they're like an enamel based. But um, I figured I would use them to add some metallic flavor to this piece. And so I've got some gun metal here. You can see it's kind of like a paste there. Almost like toothpaste. And then I've got silver. I've got some other colors that I've kind of been using. But um, there's really not much difference when you put these on the... On the model okay and we'll go over to the to the um, hammer here in a minute but I've got a, a coarse bristled brush and all I'm doing and eh, let's take some some of this stuff the silver color okay and I'm gonna get a lot of it off well actually I won't because what I'm doing now is I'm trying to add some um, here. 
Sorry, fellas. But I'm trying to add some, uh, like a brushed aluminum look to it. So all I'm doing, I've got a base coat of Tamiya metallic colors, like a gunmetal and a silver. And I, I use the Tamiya, which I wouldn't normally spray on a model. But uh, since I didn't want to waste my good stuff on, on this thing, then I just used the crappy uh, Tamiya paints. And then I, I did put a, a, lay, a coat of uh, Future on it just to protect it. And all I'm doing is I'm taking this bristled brush, and this is the silver color. And I'm going over the metal just like this, and it's going to give it that brushed aluminum look. And then I can take some gunmetal if I want to darken it up. And I'm just going over it just like this. Now, once I get this down, I am going to come back with an airbrush and some black, and I'm going to darken some areas. And I'll show you what I'm talking about. And again, this thing is a pain in the ass to work on, okay? So you can see here, I've got uh, the black laid down, and this is black spray paint. I ended up getting some uh, Rust-Oleum black primer and just sprayed it with the black primer. The stuff that I showed at the beginning of the video, I didn't like it. It was too shiny, and it never seemed to dry. This uh, Rust-Oleum black primer really does lay down, put down a good finish. So over here... You can look at this. I've already done this side. And you can see right here, I've added a little bit of black with the airbrush right along here. And it's gonna give it that kind of grungy look to it. Now on the blade, it's kind of hard to tell in the video, um, but I have applied the, the brushed look to that as well. And I'll probably come back with an airbrush and do some more weathering. I also did some dry brushing just to see. I, th I will probably do a lot more dry brushing to the, the rest of the hammer with that um, with a softer brush. And give it more of a metallic look, a worn metal look. I, will, I am, I think, going to leave it a little bit darker. So let a lot of the black show through. But uh, there we go. So I'm going to get on with this. You can see there, it gives it that nice brushed look. Now, it's not perfect, it's not great, um, but <laughs> I'm at the point where I just want to get this thing done. So um, that's kind of what I'm working on right now. Okay, so uh, I'm getting down to where I'm putting the details on it. Take an overview of it. So there it is. You can see I put the blue uh, tape in there. And uh, just to see how it would stick, and it looks like it's sticking pretty well, and I'm really gonna like it. I'm it's, I'm gonna have to. Uh, I'm not exactly sure how I'm gonna cut these pieces to fit, so I'm gonna work on that here in a little bit. But what I'm doing now is I'm working on the leather wrap. Okay, now for the metal stuff, I didn't coat that with anything. <clears throat> that paste, I don't really need to uh, put a gloss coat on it. That would dull it down anyway. Uh, this is, uh, it dries pretty quickly, and you can buff it. Uh, so I buffed it just a little bit, and then I sprayed my black over top to make it a little more grungy. So, uh, yeah, it won't need to be coated with anything to protect it, as long as I don't mask it. Now, I'm not going to be doing any masking, because masking will lift it, uh, I've, I've found. So, but anyway, let's get to the leather wraps. So I've already got this one down, and what I used to glue it was this, um... Uh, contact cement. So I would put contact cement on the leather and the uh, shaft of the hammer here and uh, glue it down. Now I've got these leather straps. Uh, it's a one inch wide leather strap and I forgot how many feet it is. It's several feet. But I got it off uh, Amazon and I've already got this one cut. Now I'm used to putting um, grips on tennis rackets because I play tennis. So basically all I've done is I've cut this to where it's going to fit nicely. Now this is too thick to overlap and I don't have enough material to overlap it like it probably should be. By overlapping I mean like this to where the top piece overlaps the bottom piece. Um, it's a little too thick for me to do that and make it look right. 
So I'm just buttoning it up against each other. So I've went ahead <clears throat> and I've cut this bottom part. I'm just going to wrap it around like this and go all the way around so it fits nice and flush like this one does. Okay, now <clears throat> we'll come over here. And I know I'm switching cameras around, but this uh, <laughs> this thing is hard to work on on camera. Making me sick. You're making me sick. Okay, so I've got this nice fresh leather strap. <clears throat> and what I'm doing to make it look a little warm. <clears throat> oh, excuse me. And I will probably do a uh, little bit more weathering on it once I get it on. But I'm taking just a piece of sandpaper and I'm going along the edge. It's probably best if I round it like this. And just start going along the edge and roughing up the edges of this to make it look like it's worn along the edges. Just like that. And that's what I did with the other one. And it just gives it a little bit more of a worn look rather than just put this fresh, clean uh, leather strap on here. And it does get kind of messy, you can see. I've got lots of, just a little bit that I've sanded. And I'm not being like, I'm not trying to be consistent with it. Just go along and haphazardly go along the edges on both sides so I get something that looks like that. Okay. And then once I get this done, then I'll go ahead and I'll start laying this down and gluing this down to the shaft and uh, give it a nice cool look. And then once it's done, I'll probably take some like leather oil or something and put it in the middle to uh, kind of darken up the middle of the handle to make it look like, you know, oil and stuff has gotten on there and worn out the middle or, you know, I don't know. We'll work with it. I may not do that. Who knows? But I'm gonna get on with this and then I'll see you in a bit. All right, fellas, I am finally done with this monstrosity. <laughs> oh my gosh. You know, I've worked on a lot of big uh, big models like the HK models, 30 second scale, uh, B17 and the uh, the B25 Mitchell. And you know, those were big planes and, and you kind of have to have a big space to work on them. But my gosh, um, <laughs> this proved to be a challenge. If I would have had a workshop with a big workbench, I think it would have been a lot easier, you know, something I could spread out. But I had to bring in sawhorses in my modeling room and and every time I would every time I would move it to paint it or try to, you know, maneuver it around, I would hit something and chip the paint. And it just it, it got to be a real big hassle. So that's why I didn't film a lot of the painting, just because I was I was fighting this thing the whole time trying to get it painted in, in my uh, modeling space. Um, last we left off, I was putting on the uh, leather wrap. I've got that on. I think it looks pretty good. I rubbed some dark pigments in there and with my hands in the center of these just to give it some, some dirt and grime, and I think that turned out pretty good. Uh, I didn't show much of the, um, the putting the reflective tape on. I was just basically um, cutting each section at a time. I was hoping to put these on all in one, uh, all in one strip along each section. It didn't, it, it just wasn't working out that way. So I had to cut each one, each section individually, like right here. I had to cut a section out and then I had to cut this section out and then splice it. Um, you can tell when you get up close that it's all spliced. <coughs> Excuse me. But uh, from a distance, I think it looks pretty good. Now the camera is probably not going to pick it up, but this does give like a glow effect. So I'll take some pictures with my flash in a darkened room and you can see how that, uh, how this reflects the light and gives it a real neat effect. Now the blade, I'm not 100% happy with the way the blade turned out. I did want it to look a lot brighter than the rest of it just to, to bring it out, but uh, I wanted it a little bit more grungy. Now I had I had tried uh, like four or five times to get, get it the way I wanted. Uh, each time it just progressively got worse and uh, I had to spray over and, and start over. So, um, you know, I'm just going to have to be happy with the way it is now. It's not as realistic as I wanted, wanted it to be. But uh, from a distance, I think it looks okay. But uh, overall, yeah, that is, uh, this is the Halo Gravity Hammer. <laughs> yeah, I am, uh, oh my God.
about three and a half weeks worth of work on this thing. Uh, it, it is a cool piece. Um, you definitely don't want to swing it and hit anything because it'll probably like break and shatter because it's actually pretty freaking heavy. Oh my God. Oh. So anyway, I will flash up some pictures. I hope you enjoyed the video. It's something a little bit different. I will probably do some normal modeling stuff on my next uh, few videos. Um, I think I'm probably, probably done with 3D printed projects for a while and I'll go back to uh, good old styrene. So uh, uh, enjoy. I hope you enjoyed the video. I will flash up some pictures and I will see you on the next episode.